Welcome to another episode of the Collab Talk podcast, where we discuss the convergence of technology, business productivity, and collaboration culture. My co-conspirators today are Sean McDonough, the senior solution architect and consultant with Acumina in Cincinnati, Ohio, Maybe. and an M365 Apps and Services MVP, like myself. Welcome. And Mr. Jeff Vorosky, a senior architect for Insight, who are everywhere. Uh, co-founder of the Boston Office 365 user group and the co-founder of the new Janky Workshop on YouTube, which he's promoting in the shirt. There you go. There we Welcome, go. gentlemen. Hello. Good to be here. And this Good is our... see you guys for once. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, people just can see that we see each other. That's that's the difference here. We always see oh, each other. Yeah. Where we record. Oh, we're supposed yeah, we to have do. video on? In the past, yeah. uh, uh, th there's always no. been video, but we just I only posted the audio to the podcast. But we're now moving to this. You know, the kids are interested in this video thing. I think it's a, a flash in the pan. It's not going to last, but newfangled you know. technology. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. So I'm starting. I'm and Christian. I'm, I just did the thing with the glasses. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Touched it. Hey, we're, we'll say we, we all have the. Do you uh? Do you want a lens wipe? I can the lens, here, lens take wipe. it. I've got yep. a few left in my box, but yeah. If I well, use those that... every time I got a smear, it'd be I'd be out of money. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out well, of money anyway. Well, this is our we're not quite monthly. It's like a month and a half, but every every time we feel like it or there's big news that's out, uh, we we get together and we talk about what's happening with uh, the various collaboration products and services that are out there. Our focus today uh, is on just that, the latest Microsoft news, including, shocking, some news around Copilot. I know you're both surprised. We're gonna I, talk about that. Well, I, I hear that's a drinking game now. Somebody says <laughs> Copilot, you gotta drink. There's a lot happening there. There's also, did you guys hear about the new version of Office coming out later this year? Is it no, screenless? Uh, is it what? Screenless. It's it's the uh, it's it's the uh, psychic interface. Just yeah, move that, move that cursor. It's gonna be great for Minesweeper. Uh, <laughs> and then there's uh, some updated adoption resources and a few other things, smaller things. I always like to leave the ex ex exciting stuff for the very end, like mesh. Anyone, you know? All right, stuff to do to talk about. Anything else? Anything else has jumped out? Newsworthy things. Oh, my channel hit a thousand subscribers this past month. So hey, congratulations. I did my part. Thank you. you All right. Later. <laughs> Ferosky out. The, the, the link will be in the description in the paragraph down below. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, anything else going on? Are you guys uh, 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 binge watching anything that's worthy? Anything uh, like that? Three body problem. Just watch that. Um, did that. you guys read the book? All right. It's about yay thick. Um, it's a very long book, and um, but uh, it's a series that was just released on Netflix. They did a pretty good job of adapting it. The, the last time I tried to read a book that was about that that length and was uh, translated from Russian, if you <laughs> know the, the ones I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, I, I, ah. I don't tend to go for that. I, my... I've got uh, too much of my kids' attention span in me. Yeah. <laughs> I hear it's got to be that. gripping, riveting. But decent I, show. I just finished the uh, small series on Amazon called Upload. Um, basically, uh, imagine a digital afterlife and that when you're in the process of, you know, dying, they upload you to a... Uh, Basically, it's like a resort, and it's all these dead people, and they also interact with living people, and very weird, but it's a huh. pretty good series. Oh, I think I saw the ad for that. You said, is it on? Is it on Prime or where is it? Yeah, it's on, on Prime. Prime. Okay, yeah, there's a there, there's a few like I'm trying to still catch. I don't watch a lot of TV. I'm more of a movie person, but I went and watched 
the Foundation series, which is also on Prime, I think. It's funny, I don't remember where series are on which service, or is that Apple? It might be Apple, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. it's not one I've seen. If it's if Apple, that would make sense. If you've read the books, I mean, I did as a teenager, read all the Asimov, I'm a sci-fi guy. Um, uh, so I don't know how accurate it is to the, the books. I'd have to go back and it's been too long, but mm -hmm. tremendous production value, just a great huh. series. It's a little slow to start as they're doing the setup, but it, it you know, right. blending of future, like future tech, uh, you know, sci-fi politics and religion all mixed up into, uh, a, a show and watch a planet get blown up and people right. decimated it's, eh. it's fantastic yeah What's so well, you gotta see and cloning and robots and all that kind of stuff so all right co-pilot well, that co-pilot yeah let's jump in <laughs> well, the, that is the future <laughs> well let me do this let me switch over and share is that going i'm gonna move this over hang on it's a bit much the way it is now i'm gonna put it over on one screen that's the beauty of, of doing video, folks, is that you get this whole experience. There we go. <laughs> and we apologize in advance. Yes. <laughs> so there you go. You guys can both see it. What's yes, new sir. in Copilot? Yes. What's new in Copilot? Yeah. So um, we lots take of things turns that are out reading. There. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> scrolling down through it of course all the links will be out in the blog so you'll be able to find it as well and if we jump and add anything into this but um yeah so a lot more going on there um I, one of the important points here uh because I don't, I don't know if you guys have followed some of the conversations or have customers that are asking about copilot um but one of the important distinctions is you know between what's this and between any other generally available web uh, AI tools is that's grounding in the Microsoft graph. I can't, it, that is so critical is why this, uh, you know, was I went out and, and purchased as soon as Microsoft announced the personal uh, licensing, the individual licensing of both the enterprise as well as Copilot Pro licensing. I went out and paid for it, installed it in my one person tenant, my, my collab talk tenant was I wanted those benefits regardless like we're we're recording this you know the podcast it's now part of my records i can go back and search into all of those things get insights you know I, i'll do air quotes insights from my conversations with you guys <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. to be a gentle slap yeah <laughs> yeah it just uh -huh. felt like a cool breeze blowing across me <laughs> uh, so it's all the stuff we've heard about though um you know the, the Outlook interaction, um, I mean, I saw a lot. I've still not gone in there and played with uh, with Copilot and Excel. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening with uh, with Loop in general, but Copilot and Loop, and there's some great video content out there. I always push over to Daryl Webster, so Daryl's a service out on Twitter, yeah. um, and he and Lorian Strant are doing a bunch of, of, of content around uh, Loop and Copilot. Um, so definitely go take a look at that. In fact, that I will need to add that link, uh, add a link over to their stuff in our list as well. Yeah, um, Daryl's been posting some loop-related pictures on Instagram lately, and I guess he was, uh, he it's the three people you mentioned, I believe, and they're um, just some shots and whatnot. So I know he's been involved with loop quite a bit. Yeah. Um, does he work for Microsoft? No. No, he's got his okay. own, uh, yeah, the modern work mentor. Um, okay. He's got his own shop and does content and stuff around that. And so I think Lorian is now officially working with Daryl. So, um, I, yeah, I, I, nowadays I just naturally ask if someone's at Microsoft because I feel like all the people I used to hang out with went to Microsoft. Yeah. You know, everybody's a program manager, a, a PFE, something up there. So, yeah, there there is a strategy for sure around the Microsoft MVP program and for Microsoft to then kind of identify and cherry pick from the community of folks that they want to to bring in. It's a uh uh you know, it, it it's a well anyway, we'll go into employment history and feelings about that. I'll just say, 
yeah, you never know where you might work in the future. So never say never about stuff as opportunities open up. <laughs> But here, here's something interesting and more kind of true to our three backgrounds around SharePoint, because one of the, uh, again, the, one of the general concerns out there and understanding the differences between uh, like ChatGPT and other AI platforms and Copilot, the fact that it's, you know, based around, you know, content accessible through the graph. So it's, it's then uh, security trimmed, but a lot of people, again, have to have those questions answered of, how do we go in? How do we secure our data? Um, so I don't know if you guys have had any of those data security concerns, you know, about Copilot with any clients. I have not. Um, certainly interest in Copilot, um, but I wouldn't say any novel conversations about security. I mean, this is a conversation I think we've all had with customers who go out. Somebody's elevated privileges and they go look at search results <laughs> and they panic because they think everybody can see it. I still have those conversations, yeah. um, but nothing specific to Copilot. I suspect that'll probably come up though. But it's like the old Delve conversations, you know, uh, uh, again, or or when fast search integration happened. And, and yeah. so I, I'm just, I'm, I'm happy that Microsoft is trying to get out ahead of that and, and answer that. There's, I've got another tab some of the latest that's happening around purview and and just governance and relate you know in general around copilot to answer that question so I mean, if you read through this and again there's more uh info and the links will be in the article um talking about purview and data governance around copilot it it's just like delve just like search it requires that you go in and proactively manage your content have sensitivity labels set up, have categorization of your content. It's gonna make search more efficient in the first place. It's also going to decrease the number of uh, unfortunate accidents, accidents that happen because you are sloppy with your information architecture. People yes. finding content that they shouldn't because it's not properly secured. Yeah, security by obscurity does not exist in the AI and search driven world. Yeah. So. So that's going on there. Um, there is again, there's there's always a trickle of, um, you know, new features coming out. They, they've got I mean, this blog post was just published um, yesterday uh, <laughs> as of this recording. So uh, with this go live next week, so uh, just a week old, which is more of just kind of the latest marketing and sales positioning around Copilot, but it's always good to go read through, give that a, a look. Um, data residency, here's another part of security. Mm -hmm. So um, it, especially with Copilot, people are, are asking, you know, can I, how can I segregate my data? If I, especially if you have international clients for those here in the, in the US, but um, having the, uh, you know, your data residency selections, be able to go in and control where my data <clears> goes, <throat> how these tools, Copilot, access that data. It is very important to many of those customers. I know most Americans, yeah. if you're not in the government, don't care as much about this. Does it work? Can I get my stuff done? Mm, yeah. Just like we don't worry too much about localization. Yeah. Right. Everybody speaks English. <laughs> so. Here's one that came out a little bit, it's, I think, after the last time. This is like a week after we talked last time. Um, so Microsoft is, of course, uh, coming out, getting out in front of it, a lot of the concerns around responsible AI development. How do we delay? Um, our AI overlords controlling every aspect of our lives. Does it give answers? So, uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's more that it's, well, it, I, again, this is one of those things I would recommend to go and read through if you have concerns about that. Um, you know, Microsoft is take, it's definitely a, taking a leadership position in, you know, ethical AI driving that conversation. And, and uh, again, I make that, the difference with 
Microsoft with Copilot versus Chat GPT and the company OpenAI going out and doing things. Not that they aren't thinking about the ethics of that, but with Microsoft being more business focused, they are thinking, uh, they are more in tune with um, what's the right way, the ethical way to do these things within the build business realm than open AI would, I would argue. That's my opinion, I don't, I'm not. Well, I'm, I'm inclined that, to agree but... with you. I mean, if Microsoft, I believe they were the first ones to introduce guardrails on the AI results and that if you maintain those guardrails that they put in place, you've got that um, guarantee that you, they'll handle uh, lawsuits and legal action against you if somebody does right. it. So, I mean, from the get go, I would say that's been their position and it just keeps getting stronger. I, I know a couple other AI players out there. Again, I'm not following every vendor that's doing something, but have very similar offers to that. So again, I look at that, I think from an IT software development perspective, the industry has learned some lessons and uh, and I think it also, I think it also speaks to uh, the fact, and this is a great thing that came up in the conversation with uh, Adam uh, this week. Uh, you know, jokingly said, you know, what are your predictions for AI and Microsoft's role the next three to five years? It's like, it's like no, no one. We're learning, we're listening, um, we're watching that, and we're we're trying to set the right path, the ethical path forward. I mean, what, what, no one can make a prediction of where things are, because that's, I think that is, what I'm trying to say is companies, I think are being more careful than ever in, you know, trying to go fast, but at the same time, understand, adjust as they're going, because we don't fully understand, and we know that we don't fully understand how this is going to impact everything around us, how we work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's seen a, an AI hallucinate <laughs> will tell you we don't understand exactly what's happening. <laughs> it, it's not a discrete process that can be mapped from start to finish. So what right. comes out of there is, in my opinion, just a black box for us right now. I know the language model system and whatnot, but don't know what it's going to come back with. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll want me to leave my wife or uh, change houses or something and express pure love for me like it did for that one journalist um, who tried to get, it tried to get him to leave his wife, <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny. So they've already but, got uh, that movie. It's it's called, basically, it's, uh, what was that with, uh, uh, called Her? Oh, with uh, uh, what, Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix. Phoenix. And, no, uh, I have and not seen that. Scarlett Johansson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it's not far-fetched. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I mean, the loser that. falling in love with an AI voice, that, that part's a little bit of a stretch, but we're not too far away from that. Wait, yeah. can I just call him a loser? I mean, he <laughs> is, but that character, but. <laughs> but uh, no yeah, value it, judgments. No, it, 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 I know it sounds a bit like we're throwing platitudes out there around this, but think of it from a, from a business transformation perspective. Uh, we don't yet fully understand how this will change things. Right. You know, it's not just an upgrade to a new version of SharePoint. And now we're going to roll out, deploy teams more broadly. It's just, it's a fundamental sh change to the way that we interact with technology that we, mm -hmm. you get a lot of the, I, not a power platform guy, but listen to some of those talks and some of the keynotes it shows. And they're talking about like, we're not far away from, you know, coding going away. Yeah, sort of, yeah. for the most part. The majority <laughs> of things being done through a conversation with AI. Yeah, it's a huge time saver, though. I mean, if you can, you know, speak a paragraph about what you're looking for and an application gets built, like how many hours and hours and hours of manpower is that? At least four. Well, <laughs> two and a half, I was going to say, but. Yeah, well, I'm the. I'm doing the project manager, you know, one and a half times, two, two times. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there's more that's coming up. I I don't really uh, follow along very closely, but on the device side, of course, there's made the news um, about, you know, Microsoft 
developing, working with different various partners in chip development with Intel around that. So um, there's the new Surface for Business devices. Uh, I don't know if you guys are following that stuff at all, but there's some new pilot on my Surface. That's about it. And here's the governance stuff. So this came out uh, at the beginning of this week and going in and talking about um, purview and specifically, and, and and look, there's some new features, but a lot of it is what's already there out of the box available today. And Microsoft, again, is trying to get ahead of this to help organizations understand here is, because I'm sure they're voicing concerns about Copilot getting access to data. Um, I mean, you, you have problems like uh, uh, Loop is a great example of you know, a new feature that's out there. Teams and SharePoint do this where, you know, the, the I don't know now the numbers, but the volume of data growth, I mean, it just continues to grow. The number of documents, the size of data that the typical organization manages is just growing exponentially uh, month after yeah. month. I think we create more content uh, in in a month or a quarter than all content created in the last 30 years. I mean, it's just insane. Yeah, I've started uh, to see some companies implement um, uh, archival policies and stuff like that for teams because just the amount of data that's going into there is so massive. You have to. Well, that's one reason why you know provisioning process and being able to enforce those guardrails without getting in the way of your end users collaborating is mm -hmm. becoming so popular. Organizations realize, you know, where we can't do enforcement like when it's already the the cat's out of the bag. You know, chase them back in. No, it doesn't doesn't work like that. So instead, you say, look, here are five templates you could use. Create as many SharePoint sites and team sites, the teams teams, as you want. Um, but all the lifecycle management, all the policies, all the classification, they're in place. Yeah, and it's all being managed yeah that's that i think that's the purpose of like this around purviews like to understand how to go in set it up categorize protect your data out of the box and then get out of the way of your people i think that that Makes old sense. model that was like the old sharepoint model was lock it down don't let anybody do anything and what happens <laughs> what happens when you nobody collaborates down? <laughs> or they uh, do. servers under the desk <laughs> right or a new uh, uh more common now is just hey there's this third party tool i paid for with my personal credit card and yep. we're right. we're using that yep see you know, what else um you know so there's this a little bit of competitive view this is out on site android authority microsoft takes on chat gpt plus with worldwide release of copilot pro so, you know, same, basically the same pricing, you know, the diff, difference is 20 bucks for, for uh, uh, ChatGPT, 20 bucks for Copilot Pro, um, where it's built on, um, I, I don't remember if this is, if it says in here, co whether it's, uh, is Copilot Pro, is it built on ChatGPT4 Turbo? Do you guys know? I don't I'm know. not sure. So that that might be a differential. Okay, there this is as well as priority access. Uh, as priority access. Okay. So oh, it does. Uh, priority access to it. So again, I'm already I'm already paying for that, but I I look to the day where I can stop paying, you know, for Chat GPT and just use everything in Copilot and do that. But um, yeah, there's still some nuanced differences there but the biggest difference being that with copilot pro it's pulling from drawing from your office productivity apps your word powerpoint email that teams well yeah with that with pro no you need enterprise for teams that's the primary difference there mm -hmm. you definitely want copilot for teams it's awesome if you guys don't have that i'm sorry <laughs> can it take my meetings for me yeah, actually, Sean, if if you missed it, like three days ago, um, we got uh, MVPs. We got the Copilot licenses. If you didn't see that email, so you go point it at your personal tenant. So one license for year trial. 
Um, I'm course, I, had already, I already paid for it. So <laughs> now I'm but just going to have, better. I'll have a second, I'll have a, a second profile. Oh, the nice thing about it is that I'll have a second profile and put it on a, a test account so I can actually go in and do co-pilot testing demo stuff and have a second profile. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, yeah. Uh, the other stuff that's out there, this is another space. Uh, and, and, and by the way, you guys have heard that uh, uh, Ignite is back, right? The old Ignite? No, I did not hear that. So nope. it's hitting, it's in Chicago in, I believe, November. Hmm. And I think the Microsoft says they're expecting like 10 to 12,000 people. I think it could grow bigger if the, the demand is there. Um, but I know I, I've been vocal about the model that the, the post pandemic, the minimized 3000 person version uh, in Seattle, which was, you know, not the kind the value that I was looking to get into. It might, Okay, look, I'm gonna, I'll soapbox for a second on this, but you guys have heard me talk about this. The problem that I have is that the value in conferences like Ignite is not the sessions. Uh, you know, we get the phone calls, we see the 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 uh, the book of news, we get all the announcements. Microsoft loves it because they get 10 or 20x the number of registrations and people that they can blast their marketing messaging out to. The problem is. I don't get the one-on-one -on -one with MVPs, with the product and engineering teams. I don't get to go see the extensive expo hall and see what partner solutions and what other experts mm -hmm. are doing in the space. The value yeah. to me, I'm more likely to go to a session that's done by either of you that are practitioners where you're sharing, I went and did the deployment, here's what I learned. And you get much more of that kind of content um, at, the old model of the show versus the mm -hmm. slick look at a screen vendors can't give away swag there's a problem right there no <laughs> swag at a conference that's just wrong it's morally wrong right like what are, like what are you know people going to leave you know for the uh, the people that uh, clean their hotel rooms afterwards right like all the free t-shirts <laughs> they were i getting, know you know, like, i know. You know and pencils and little lights yeah. and all sorts of things yeah <laughs> blinking pens <laughs> yes um, See, I, I went to a uh, uh, woodworking conference uh, a month ago, and you got like clamps and like double-sided sticky tape and screws and stuff like that. It was fantastic. Best swag bag I ever think I got. Yeah. <laughs> and you get well, to meet people I, who are cool. Yeah. yeah <laughs> coming back from events, it's it's funny. I, I you know, jokingly say this. I'm, I've, I've got, you know, two rules. Um, one for my wife, uh, do not bring home T-shirts. Uh, and I, I failed. I came home from MVP Summit with one shirt. And uh, but it's that sport tech. It's the light, like the sweat wicking one. So for workouts, mm. like it's a, it's, yeah. it's better. Um, and then no, no backpacks. And oh uh, if you, if you've not <laughs> been show to a you Microsoft a closet conference, here, just... yeah, yeah. No, I have backpacks. this giant bin in the garage that is nothing but never used. Microsoft conference backpacks, but it's my collections. Like, no, don't touch it. <laughs> my spinal I tap. Might use, like, I might use one of these someday. Are. Yeah. <laughs> now it's, it's my spinal vintage, tap moment. So, yeah. But anyway, uh, the point I was making about that is that uh, is that because so much of the the content is focused around uh, practitioners sharing their learnings. Um, more so that you get you get a little bit of that in, in the online, the virtual stuff, but it's more marketing versus practitioner, practical application of and adoption. And I love that there's more and more content coming around around adoption now for Copilot as we're starting to see because most organizations, it's it's in production at very few places. Everybody's piloting it. It's like all you can do right now because uh, going back, like, no, we don't fully understand it. Uh, like the, the the change is happening, but you're starting to see some content that's coming out. Like this, uh, just is a um, kind of an announcement. PR Newswire, um, just as an example, uh, like Infotech sharing kind of their best practices. You need to go and understand the goals. This is like project management 101. It's like for every project, consider technical requirements. Yes, mm -hmm. assessing the existing technology landscape. Yes. 
and yet uh, enhancing we data protection. For, steps. Sorry, I said, and yet we still continue to miss these steps and typical well, right. projects that end up going sideways. Right. Yeah. That. Well, that's that's the thing. I mean, at the core of all of this is 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 having a deployment methodology, a change management methodology, adhere to it, learn from it, adjust. So pilot it out, learn from it, pilot again, learn from that, expand the pilot, pilot again. Um, I mean, that's the path forward. Um, one benefit is I just can't recommend the site enough. If you have, do not have this site bookmarked, it's come a long way from when it was launched but now you go up and you get the role based with the product. So you can go specifically, I love that it has the change, you know, information. So, you know, what's new here, but I could go into, you know, the adoption resources around Copilot. This is where you're going to get the adoption kit that has uh, templates, has project plans, has onboarding suggestions, um, uh, you know, uh, adoption guidance. How do we get people excited about it? How do we ensure they're using it? Um, are we sure that we're taking the right steps moving forward, answering all the common questions for it? Um, you're finding all those resources out here. And if you find like there's a resource missing from any one of these products, uh, the solution areas, um, let Microsoft know they're very responsive. And a lot of the content, it's not just Microsoft producing this. There's a lot of community people, a lot of fellow MVPs that are helping de develop the materials. Um, so you definitely want to bookmark this site. Um, oh, and here's, here's one, sorry, there's ads everywhere on this, but so Office 2024 um, coming <clears throat> later, later this year. Um, so, I mean, there's a little bit of information. I think there's a lot here of what is, you know, differences between um, this and what's already available on Microsoft 365. Remember, because they develop for the cloud and then they figure out after a while with the incremental, the constant change that's happening, what needs to be in an, a desktop and on-prem version of these products and then create a version of that. So it's, I don't know, maybe they have it on a regular time, you know, schedule. I don't know what that is, but when was the last version? Is it 2019? No, was there a, uh, 20 office 18 maybe i don't i'm not sure i've had the um the online version, version that gets updated yeah. all the time so yeah um is that what they're rebranding it if you look at that first bullet down there it says microsoft office 364 is that I the, uh, that. the one-time yeah. purchase I, version <laughs> I, I think it's a it's a typo or it's a clever way of saying it's slightly less than the yeah. online version. <laughs> Microsoft 364. There's uh, stuff, I mean, something other, Mr. Other, Mom would say. Other incremental things. Yeah, 220, 221, whatever it takes. Um, <laughs> I love this, uh, you know, the expansion of the, uh, the the mobile app. And kudos to the Microsoft team that's developing a lot of the, the apps because, uh, especially around Teams, Teams app is so much more solid than the desktop app and it's mm -hmm. been for a long time the running joke for years yeah why can't what? authentication work like it does on my phone oh right <laughs> what's talked about like it's like I'd, I'd love just to have an emulator for the you know back when <laughs> switching between tenants was just a pain but it worked it beautifully in the mobile app just yep. have the emulator sitting on the desktop and have all your chats and be able to quickly jump now they fixed that do the air quotes again fixed that yeah like and dogs it, it get fixed mostly works it mostly works all the time uh, <laughs> 50 percent of, of the time, time works, it works every time all the time <laughs> <laughs> um but the mobile i i'm a fan of the mobile app so that you know when they add more like the designer uh, image ai feature that capability make it more robust there I and mean, i'm not using that that kind of feature out there i'm not building slides on my phone but you I could. Might. I could. <laughs> Teeny tiny. I just remember uh, it was like Michael Knoll and people that know Michael is a fellow MVP based out of San Francisco. And uh, 
he travels more than just about any MVP that I don't know if he's traveling as much as he used to, but like yeah, he, he and Joe Olison, who's a, an RD um, for those that don't follow them, both just concluded visiting all 193 countries on the planet, the recognized um, country. So the last country that they tried for years to get permission to go and in, get into was Libya. And it's one of the mm. most dangerous for an American. And so they, but they both just went and did that earlier. I think this year. Yeah. It just, it just happened. I think this spring. Anyway. So you can go find Joel and Michael Knoll. Anyway, Michael Knoll for a while, I think for a year, he stopped carrying traveling to events and stuff with his laptop and just had his phone. And hmm. I don't, it didn't, didn't work out long-term, but I think, uh, where he presented, where he just had his three or four decks and everything else in the cloud and was able to plug in. Uh, it wasn't an iPhone, um, but it was able to plug into a pretty beefy uh, phone, de mobile device, um, but was able to do everything he needed. He had one of those Bluetooth little mini travel keyboards. And so he was oh, able wow. to get work done from the hotel and stuff on, on mm -hmm. his phone. But um, yeah, I, Still not enough screen for me. Yeah, me too. Um, more stuff happening in, in Teams. Um, again, this is something that if you have in uh, like the, the Compose, the chat Compose box capability, um, a lot of the features, I mean, this is uh, uh, like I'm doing for this recording for the podcast. Make sure they're always recorded in Teams so it automatically goes and is captured. The transcripts are, are captured. So I can more easily go through with it. What do we cover? What are the, each of the topics? Summarize that for me from these meetings. And it's fantastic to have that, um, that intelligent call recap and that hybrid experience. So lots going on with Teams. Yeah, that is in the enterprise version of Copilot. So if you don't have that, you definitely want to go try all that. Um, and then there's the mesh stuff for either one of you. Well, Sean, you were for a while, you were following along with the mesh stuff and, and the, the AI stuff or the, uh, uh, not the AI stuff, the, uh, uh, um, the VR stuff. Yeah. Are you still doing any of that? Um, no, not really. Um, I know that there's stuff been happening, but I mean, I still use VR occasionally, but I'm not as um, big a proponent for it anymore and i i think it's just this you know people that use vr think it's really cool and then about a month later they stop <laughs> using it it's not like you know playing a game on your computer or something even though it's pretty much the same experience so i'm not sure what that is but i think that's one of the reasons um i haven't been looking more into it it's just information overload yeah what you haven't, you haven't gotten the uh, the fancy new Apple goggle vision, whatever it is. <laughs> I don't buy fruit products. <laughs> yeah, I cannot bring myself it, to do that. And, and and I've said this for a long time. Like I'm I'm not as much of a proponent for the pure VR that as I am for the AR solutions. AR, yeah. Which yeah. is just like I, I I will if the Google glasses come back, uh, and you know have something that's not the huge headset but just has that screen overlay so that it enhances the things that i'm doing i i would absolutely love that i love that concept you would become oh, yeah. a glass hole huh i would become a glass <laughs> hole but i think that the the augmented reality again and we've talked about this in the past but i i think that is really where the business application of the technology really comes into play like the other mm -hmm. stuff like i get it at the and my running joke is that now we have the e3 and e5 it's the e7 license where you get the pants or the legs for your avatar you get <laughs> upgrade. You get that um, i think they're yeah. pushing that back to e10 now yeah <laughs> well i i just like i get it and and a lot of people that especially that uh, that work in the accessibility world like love that having that as an option um yeah. and something i will say in defense of vr is that your brain adjusts so quickly 
going and moving yeah. around in that environment. I mean, there's still some limitations of the devices and what you need and the cost around those things. But to go in and do a lecture and the, the ability to be sitting and watching a presentation, like, could I be doing that? Just looking at my 2D screen, of course. And you're watching a 2D you know, presentation in a 3D VR world, but you have the ability, like, I could be sitting there, I could see Sean float over, hey, there's Sean, I could go over and be like, hey, Sean, as we walk away from the lecture going on, we can have a side conversation, and it's it, it's spatially aware of, of that, and find other people, and go to virtual booths, and all those kinds of things. Is it a replacement for the in-person? Like, I, I just don't think so. Like, I don't think we're anywhere close to that. Yeah, I don't think anytime soon. Yeah. Probably not. One day eventually. But when we get to like Wally level and we're just floating around in our little uh our little chairs that uh you know automatically change our clothes for us and get us slurpees, you know. <laughs> uh so over on Therot, there's an article that came out today, just I skimmed it around. Uh, so the Microsoft 365 basic you know, beefing up security and some of the mobile features um, that are out there, you know, so that which is uh, it's just great to see, uh, you know, further refinement of and and what typically happens with Microsoft, it has that the trickle down economy effects. They go and do stuff. They charge the premium after a year or two, a bunch of the innovation that happens at the premium level finds its way down to the lower tiers. And so you're starting to see that with even the uh, the the M365 basic capability. And then the last thing I wanted to, to point to um, was uh, uh, you know, I'm just a huge fan of the Work Lab site, uh, which is run by the research team at at Microsoft. I think they're still in Building 99 over there. Um, I don't know where this team that does all this content is out of. These researchers might be different than the R&D team at, at Microsoft. But um, it, again, it, it's great to go in and they're doing a lot of content around, you know, what is changing about the way people interacting with technology because of AI and what still needs to change. Like where are the biggest adjustments going to be just in how we work in the working style. Um, I think that's going to be the biggest topic as far as like adoption and and really um, broadening the reach of Copilot is, you know, looking at, okay, here they rolled it out to, you know, they, they reached out to 1300 Copilot users and then go through and pull data, let's look at specific stories, examples. How are you incorporating that into the way that you're working? What's different about the way that you're working? And we just don't have enough stories and data yet around this. Mm -hmm. So once we start having that, that's why I brought that up with Microsoft Ignite. I think that's gonna be the first big conference where we're really gonna start to see the adoption stories, this this data coming in about how we're using Copilot. So that's that's about it. I don't know if there's any other big news that we've missed. The probably. Oh, the new Ghostbusters came out last weekend. <laughs> well, yeah. Have you, have you seen it yet? Going tomorrow with the kids. Yeah, I tried to convince my wife to go see it tomorrow, and she said, no, thank you. Oh, <laughs> I'd go with a, you, buddy. She's not a sci-fi. I just, man, I am. No problem going by myself. I, there's, as long I, as you get I, your I, big popcorn. Of course. <laughs> I've got, do they have uh, fat cats out where either of you guys live? No. I what mean, I have that? a cat that's fat, but. <laughs> uh, it's it's in a few states, sort of but it's for folks that know that we, we that's my local. It's a, one of the luxury theaters, so every uh, seat is a recliner and, and all yeah. that stuff. We have so that, I've got yeah. I've got the member bucket and mug, so it's super cheap for refills and Ooh. yeah. But Christian is the only guy I have ever seen get a big thing of popcorn and then go back and get another one. <laughs> when we were seeing so uh, Ghost in the Shell. Did I, did I, did I, did I share my popcorn? 
Well, I got my own. Yeah, um, I, I. But I, I would I not have reached for that popcorn. I might have lost my hand. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> I, I I do that like if I go see a movie with one of my one or more of my sons, um, and uh, they know better. They like bring their own bucket. They've got member buckets <laughs> as well or whatever. I said I said all right, or we can share. And when it's empty, you're going back to refill it. You're paying for the refill. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm typically one of those like in restaurants. Um, are, are either of you like a sharing food person or is this like if you were hungry and wanted that you should have ordered it this is my food <laughs> it depends on the restaurant yeah. go back and forth yeah if something is novel and you know maybe the first time we've eaten there I know that I'll sometimes offer and share with someone but generally I tend to fall into your category of you should, you should have ordered it well, I'm not giving you mine well, I excuse it because of just my big family upbringing. I'm the second oldest of 10 kids. Like, you got some food, you would protect it. Yeah. <laughs> my, my dog is that way. If you, it, it, you know, you go and he's eating in the bowl and you go reach for his bowl, like, he'll freeze and growl. He's he'll tell you. Before he tears in your hand. Yeah. Down, Cujo. Yeah. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, really, as always, I really appreciate your time and, and insights into these these topics. And uh, I'm sure we'll be doing this again in another month, month and a half. Sounds about Thank right. Still, thank you for still thank keeping for us around. Thank you for Yeah. You've been listening to the Collab Talk podcast. New episodes are published weekly, and you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and most other podcast platforms. Thanks for listening.